My topic for today is church is God's family. So I'm just going to pray um, for us as we get started. And uh, yes, um, so Father, I just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you want to share with us. And I just pray that you'll help me to um, communicate clearly what it is that you've laid on my heart for us as a family. God, we want to be open to all that you have for us. And so we just say, do in us, Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do. God, we just say thank you. We love you. We love your presence. And we just ask that you will keep speaking to us and keep ministering to our hearts as we go through um, the rest of this message. Amen. So what a year and a bit and nearly a half it has been. And um, I'm sure um, if you're anything like me, there will be things that you have stopped doing, things that you've started doing, things that you realize, oh, I can live with that. I can live without that and that I cannot live without. So for me, personally, I realized I can live without going to the gym four or five times a week. Who knew that I was going to be able to do that? Um, I can live without going into my office. I have not worked in there for quite a long time, as I'm sure many of you have, if you work in an office. Um, I... I realized I cannot live without fresh air and going outdoors. That is not something I knew about myself before this season, but I have to be outside. And um, I've learned as well that I cannot live without connection or church family. Um, so I really just felt, um, for me, this past season has really been a bit of a reset for my life, a bit of a circuit breaker. And I just felt today, um, I guess just God's been speaking to me about what next and what does it look like, you know, as, you know, how am I going to be extra diligent actually in looking after my time and making sure that I am spending it in ways that are going to have me grow and actually like what is it that God wants me to do with my time and who does he want me to spend it with so I really feel like today was like I just wanted to wave like a caution flag somehow at everybody to just be like just um be careful not to pick back up things that you had on your plate before um and be careful I guess you know who are we going to invest time with and what are we going to do to grow going forward so the thing about Hope Church, which I love, is all of the incredible promises that God has given us as a family. Um, we know that he wants to do with us beyond what we can ask for, think or imagine. And actually, all of these words we've had about him moving in our midst and the impact that we're going to have in Glasgow and on Scotland and beyond actually are you know, we can't make that happen ourselves. Actually, it takes us hosting his presence. And, and to do that, we need to have a solid foundation of family, which I'll get into a bit um, as we go. But we, we really need to be able to steward well what he wants to pour out. And just a few examples of togetherness in the New Testament. So we know um, at Pentecost, they were all together when Holy Spirit was poured out for the first time. Then in Acts 4, um, they were all together um, when they were praying and the place, the building shook, if you remember, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and were able to speak um, God's word um, with boldness. They were gathered together um, when Peter was in prison to pray. Um, and then obviously that incredible story of how he was released. And that was in Acts 12. They gathered uh, together to hear testimonies from Paul and Barnabas when they returned from their first missions trip in Acts 14. And they gathered that time where they gathered to break bread together when uh, Paul ended up preaching until midnight. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. Um, and they had Eutychus. Like, I mean, honestly, I just sometimes put myself in the story. Like, what would you have been like if you just saw this guy fall out the window and then died and then get raised to life? Amazing. Um, but those were really key moments for them as a, as a church community um, for growth. And actually, God's got some incredible things in store for us too. So um, the verse that we're going to be looking at today is Ephesians 2.19 which says this, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So we're members of the household of God. So if you just want to like feel free to repeat after me, I'm a member of the household of God. Sometimes we just need to like, you know, get it drummed into our heads. Um, so feel free to do that if you want to, those in the room, <laughs> you're welcome. So, so church is God's family and family is God's plan for extending the kingdom. Um, you know, we were, uh, God told us in Genesis 1 when he, when he created man and woman, not Adam and Eve, man and woman, he told them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And actually 
that is what God wants us to do, is, is be in relationship with another and extend the kingdom. Um, Galatians 6 talks about us being a family of believers. Um, and actually, the thing in hope is we want mothers and fathers to raise up sons and daughters to become mothers and fathers, who raise up sons and daughters to become mothers and fathers. And it's really important that we find, you know, who are the people that we're running with? Who are the, who are our, like, you know, iron sharpening iron people? Who are the ones that are pouring into us? You know, who are like the mums and dads in our life? Who are the ones we are pouring into? Because actually, um, you know, we need to be really... Um, intentional about the way that we actually choose to where we choose to get planted in this what soil we're going to be in um, and I think um, the thing about to, in order to be a family that thrives we actually just need to make sure that we're planted in, in three um, different types of soil one um, the soil of God's word so important like if you're not reading the bible regularly I just want to encourage you like you know get yourself a reading plan get like the audio bible like I love Todd White like literally will just listen to like the audio bible like in his ear all day because he's just like I need to, this needs to feed me I have to just like digest and consume God's word so do something get God's word into you because we need it to grow um, and in the soil of God's presence which you can find lots of ways of doing that whether you want to worship on your own in your house whether you you know gather with others and the restrictions as they lift that's going to become more and more possible which is amazing but the third one is this that we need to grow in the soil of God's family actually God has you know that in order for us to thrive be healthy bear fruit actually we need one another every believer needs to be committed to some sort of ongoing fellowship with other believers in order to grow the way that God intended and actually for for us to grow in maturity and become like Jesus like both of those things are the goal that for us to be mature and for us to become like Jesus actually that's you know that's why we've got the five-fold ministry gifts like those are the things that are the goals and and so we need one another to be able to do that and in hope we have family not only uh, as part of our vision but also we have it as a core value and two of the uh, parts of our vision statement we explain like what do we mean like what actually is what is family for us and family means embracing community and our place within it and also family means welcoming all ages to belong to contribute and grow together so the thing about church family or, or community, whichever word you want to use, is that actually there's something in each of us that just like we're made for it. You know, God said to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. Actually, we need, we have it in our DNA to connect to other human beings. And um, the thing is, we're not meant to. We're not meant to do it alone. We're meant to be connected. We're meant to be in unity with one another. And I guess what I'm, I'm not talking about, <laughs> the thing that really I find quite difficult sometimes is like, oh, hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm not talking about that kind of like, in, I'm not good, talking about that kind of relationship or connection. I'm talking about, you know, deep heart connection, someone who really knows you and vice versa, someone who's going to be iron sharp and iron, someone who sees you warts and all, someone who you know, it doesn't have to be one person, it could be several who are actually, you know, that great um, definition by Chris Vallotton of accountability being our account of our ability, not an account of our disability. So not here's all the ways I've mucked up or the things that are sin in my life, but actually here's what God's called me to and I need you to hold me to account for all the things that I'm, I'm meant to be here for and what God's put in my life. Um, and sometimes that can be difficult because, you know, people are not perfect and, uh, you know, that can be challenging at times but the thing about community and family is it's not something that you just get handed to you on a plate or that you can just you know you can just somehow be given actually it's something you participate in creating so family is something that you participate in creating and what that translates as is that actually if there's someone you want to connect with and you think, oh, do you know what? I just feel like I need to run with that person or I need that person to pour into my life or I need to pour into that person's life, then can I just encourage you, don't be sitting around waiting to be asked or invited or whatever. Actually, we're all powerful. 
people and that means that you're not powerless in relationships or connection and so you know I, I'll often say to this one or that one do you know what I, I feel like I would like to just hang out with you so I, I, I might just come over to your house for dinner my mom and dad laugh at me because they, they're like oh my goodness you're just such a squatter we didn't raise you to be like that but there's there's just this thing of like I just want to there's sometimes there's people and I'm like I just need to be in your life and I'm gonna have you in my life even if you don't want me in yours I'm, I'm joking uh, but actually there's there's just that like we need to initiate sometimes and um, and I would just say this, do not make assumptions about, you know, whether someone is or is not available to you. Don't even, you know, because we can have all these ideas in our head, oh, they're too busy, they've just had a baby or they've got this going on or that going on. Just don't do that. Just do not make assumptions. Um, ask. That's all I would say. Ask. Um, the other thing about, about church family is that actually how you view something depends on how you interact with it. So when I first rocked up in Hope Church, I literally was just like, oh, I've come home. I just knew this is the place I'm meant to be. This is family for me. This is like, I was meant to be here. And I sometimes have to remind myself of that when it's chucking it down with rain. And I think, oh my goodness, I should have been born in the Mediterranean because I love the sun. And it's, But I'm like, do you know what? God has called me to be here. And that means that actually, this is my family. This is home. And that means I'm gonna, how I'm going to interact with it is going to look like something. Um, and over the years, lots of people have told me that. Um, so I'm hoping that's still a thing for people. But I just want to ask you guys a few questions. I mean, you might be sitting at home or sitting here thinking, oh, I've nailed it. I am like the queen or king at community and church family. Like I honestly, I'm just so good at it. Like everybody, you know, that is close in my life knows all about me. Brilliant. I just would encourage you, like who is not connected in that way that you could help? Because some people just need a wee bit of a shove in the right direction. So who else needs to be helped to be connected in but here are just a few questions for us to ponder here's the first question do you see hope church as home um, and your family and if so how do you interact with it and does that need to change so do you see hope church as home and your family and if so how do you interact with it and does that need to change um, and are you embracing this community and your place within it and if not, why not? And what needs to change? And I mean, that might apply. You might have been tuning in online to this and you're in a different church. So just apply those questions to your own church environment. So we, we believe deeply in church family. Actually, it is just so, so important. And the, we will continue to create opportunities for us to connect um, as a family together. But the thing is that we each have a personal responsibility to engage with family. So I'm just going to ask you two more questions to ponder. You can have a think about. So we've got an incredible small group structure in Hope Church with some of the best small group leaders ever. I get to oversee that and it's an absolute privilege because they are total legends, absolute troopers, especially in this season. Um, but if we did not have a small group structure in Hope Church family, would you still pursue community with other believers in Hope? And lastly... Um, I just felt to ask this one, it might seem a bit hard or harsh, but I just would encourage you to chat to God about it, depending on whether it uh, relates to you or not. So do you go to people in Hope Church family when you need prayer or support or to share good news? Or do you go to other Christians or non-Christian friends instead? And if it's the latter, I'd encourage you to just as a wee bit of homework to process with God is actually ask him like what are the reasons for where I choose to connect and what do you want me to do about that um for me personal responsibility is really one of the main hallmarks of maturity and the opposite of personal responsibility would be consumerism so in my family of McFarlands um you know if there is a kid there and they're young, I'm not going to expect the kid to get involved in helping. If we have a guest come for a meal, I'm not going to expect the guest to get up and do the dishes. But if there would be like, say, one adult in my family and they did not help before the meal, during the meal or after the meal with the whole big, you know, thing that was happening, actually, we would feel the effect of that person who didn't participate or help. And it's the same in the church. So, the the thing about family, church or otherwise, is there are always boring jobs to be done as well as fun ones. And I guess for me, like learning to serve has really helped me to grow. So I just, 
I want to just big up serving. It's awesome. And uh, Galatians 5, 1 says this, do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. And that is the thing, actually. There's something about humility that God just grows in you as you serve one another, actually. And, it, and I think it almost deepens your love for others because you're just being sacrificial and doing something for them that you wouldn't... Um, you know, normally do. So for me, I have served a lot of teams and, uh, you know, I've done everything from, you know, welcome to singing in the worship team, to children's ministry, to being a small group leader, to leading our supernatural school, to on and on and on. And I guess, you know, for me, you know, I also served in a homeless um, initiative that we had as part of Hope Church. And the thing is, I wasn't really called to do any of those things. It wasn't like God was like, oh yeah, you're called to do children's ministry or you're called to be on welcome at the door. Actually, there are chores to be done in a family. And so I just have done what's needed, um, what's been needed. Um, so I just want to give you guys just a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to have you ponder um, a question um, and let's let you chat to God about it. So here it is. Father God, moving forward, how do you want me to engage with hope as my family? Or if you're in a different church and watching this, insert that name. So Father God, moving forward, how do you want me to engage with hope as my family? And what do you want that to look like practically in the way that I serve? So Father God, moving forward, how do you want me to engage with hope as my family? And what do you want that to look like practically in the way that I serve? I'm just going to give you a few minutes. So feel free to continue um, chatting to God about that later if you haven't finished. But I mentioned earlier that, you know, in order for us to thrive and have healthy fruit bearing lives that we need to be planted in the soil of God's presence and in his, his word and in family. And I guess just to, you know, this is not rocket science, but the devil is at war with us and he tries to disconnect us from each of those three things because the last thing he wants is for us to grow or to bear fruit. Um, and the way that he goes to war is that he lies because he's the father of lies. Um, and so I've just pulled out two lies that I think that he can try to feed us. You might have others that you can think of yourselves and um, that he tries to feed us regarding family. And the first one is this, I'm fine on my own and I don't need people in my life. Um, that unfortunately is something that I have heard people say and it doesn't always go very well for them, sadly. Um, now the culture of, of the world and the culture of the kingdom are two entirely different things. And we need to be really aware of the fact that there are values held by the world that are just not they're just not biblical um so the bible paints a completely different picture about family and connection so you only have to look at you know paul's letters and how he was writing to this one and thanking them and a big shout out to this person and how amazing they are and he was someone who had deep heart connection with lots of people um and jesus was the one who said you know no greater love um, there's no greater love than this than laying down your life uh, for a friend. And um, Jesus prayed that we would be one, that we would be connected and one and in unity. And 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that we're one body with many parts. Now, culture can tell us, you know, we're fine on our own, we don't need anyone. But actually, th the thing about that is it's, probably, it's a lie. It's not probably a lie. It's definitely a lie that can be coming from a few places. And one of them could be from a place of pride. You know, there's this thing in our culture of actually seen to be needing help uh, as a sign of weakness, particularly in the west of Scotland. It is a, definitely a thing. Um, and Or it could be seen as a, you know, this thing of... of um, it could become from a place of protection that maybe you have had a bad experience of relationships in the past and so you're just not willing to step out or you need to be healed up of some stuff. Or it could just be a thing of independence, actually, this coming from this place of independence. Um, and we know that there is a spirit of independence in our nation. Um, and it's a stronghold and it's in the atmosphere of our nation and actually if we're not careful, it, it bleeds uh, into the church and it can affect our lives um, and two of the ways that does that would be um, 
first of all, independence, you re reject established authority. So in the context of church, that means that you would be unwilling to um, fully submit to leadership authority or um, the ability to live um, your life without being helped or influenced by other people. So that is a thing that is in our nation that, that does bleed into the church. So, And if you believe that lie, then you're basically just going to give up and use that as an excuse to give up on the family of God, which is very sad and not what we want at all. And the second lie, which I actually have heard people say, is no one will miss me if I'm not there. Um, so... Um, Ephesians 4.16 talks about every joint supplying and the Passion Translation explains it particularly well, says this, for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. So that means when you're not here, because we're constantly connected as one, if you're not present at church things, um, your absence is a felt reality in the body. So anytime you find yourself saying, oh, I'm not going to go to that prayer thing or that worship thing because I, I won't be missed and I'm not really needed there, actually your, uh, your absence is a felt reality. Um, so for me, about 15 years ago, our church, we went through a bit of a difficult time and actually what happened was I ended up, sadly, I had no friends left because my entire small group uh, left the church. And uh, what I had to do was a few things. And I just really want to highlight them because this could be you. You could be like, do you know what? I'm going to have to start from scratch or I've not done a great job of connecting or you might just want to put some things in place for going forward. Um, so I had to be intentional. I had to put myself out there. I literally turned up at every event under the sun and was just like, oh man, uh, I'm not really loving this. I would, you know, because I sometimes can be quite shy, which people wouldn't know about me, but uh, I was really had to be courageous and risk my heart. And Proverbs 18, 25, Four in the New King James Version says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. So actually, if we want to reap a harvest of friends and have deep connections with people, actually it starts with us sowing some seeds of friendliness. And that hasn't stopped with me. I continue to be intentional with lots of uh, people that I'm close to. Um, I had to be patient because, you know, relationships do not are not in depth uh, overnight. I had to be determined and just stubbornly persist um, no matter how hard it gets because actually church family and connection and, and deep heart relationships are non-negotiable for me and I just really had to trust God for a great outcome. Um, so I just want to share one of the things that God's been speaking to me about this week. Um, so first of all, the... Um, if you've not heard me talk about this before, but redwood trees are an incredible analogy of the way that uh, church relationships function. So redwood trees, they have their roots uh, quite near the surface, sometimes actually on top of the forest floor. And they are like sent out in hundreds of feet, like sent out and all the trees are intertwined and connected to each other. And what happens is actually they, they need one another for nutrients to grow. And also the... Um, like when storms come or things are difficult, it's actually the other trees, the root network of the other trees around a particular tree that helps it to stay upright. So they actually totally rely on one another, um, which is just an amazing analogy of church relationships. So what God's been speaking to me about this week is how he showed me actually that he wanted Hope Church family to be like the webbed bed of a trampoline. Now, I know that we have someone in the room who's a keen trampoline person, but the professional trampolines you get, those white ones, um, you know, that are like with the quarter inch squares, um, actually that was the picture I saw. And it's it's the springs that create the bounce, but actually it's the, the bed and the fabric that's interwoven together that creates this sturdy and strong landing area. And what I felt was that actually, um, you know, I can't be connected. I am connected to the whole, but I can't be in deep heart connection with every single person on that square bed. I'm connected to the ones around me. Um, and actually what that needs to happen is that that multiplies throughout the whole of our church family. And what I saw was that actually that 
that trampoline bed being like the wineskin that God uh, wanted us to host his presence and allow him to pour uh, into us and that we would be propelled up and out in the same way that you would bounce on a professional trampoline. Because we're called to go into all the world um, and actually we need each other to do that because family is the foundation on which revival is going to come. Actually, for all that God wants us to do, we need to have one another. We need to be in deep relationship so that when he moves in power, when he comes, when he does things that are beyond what we can ask for, think and imagine, we actually are not going to run away. We're all going to stay in the room. We're all going to, you know, stay connected. Even if God moves and it's through somebody that you weren't expecting, that actually we don't have any offense. All we have is uh, like openness, yieldingness, and love in our heart to one another and to God to be able to receive all that he has for us. Um, so as we look to the months ahead, I guess, remember my caution flag from earlier, um, actually is, will we stay planted in the soil of God's word, his presence, and his family so that we grow and bear fruit? Because we're, we're not our own, we were bought at a price. And um, so actually, will we let him lead us in how we spend our time and who with and how we connect to Hope Family. So I'm just going to pray for us and then I'm going to give you a wee bit of homework and then we'll end. Ah, oh, Father, I just want to pray, God, that you would um, you put a passion in our hearts for church family, that you would um, give us a real hunger for connection at a real deep heart level, that, that God, we just pray that God, we want to host and steward your presence well. And I pray that, um, God, for all that you want to pour into Hope Family, I pray you'll get us ready individually and corporately, that we would be um, yeah, open and ready for all that you have in store for us. And God, I, I want to pray for wisdom for the months ahead as restrictions ease and things open up, that we would just have wisdom to know how to spend our time and who with. And Jesus, that you know, becoming more like you would be the goal. And I want to pray, Jesus, as you as you prayed for us, God, let us, yeah, I just pray, Jesus, we'll, we, that we would be one just as you and the Father are one. So I pray just for relationships across Hope Church to deepen and strengthen and that we would prioritize you and one another. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So your homework for this week, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is I just want to encourage you to be brave and participate in creating family uh, by sharing with one person in Hope Family this week what God has been showing you, reminding you of, or speaking to you about uh, today, and then ask that person to pray for you.